God open a new dawn to us, a new dawn. Let the heavens be opened upon us tonight. Reveal yourself through your word. Father, we want to hear your voice through your word tonight in the name of Jesus. We want you to move mightily. We want you to demonstrate your power. We want you to show us that you have been with us with this journey. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah, that's it, my friends. I want to welcome you to the day one of our 21 days of glory, and it's an amazing time. What a beautiful time we have, and we are going to enjoy ourselves in the Holy Ghost tonight. I want to welcome you to power. Prayer, I mean, fasting without prayer is a waste. We know that this particular time is crucial for the fast and for the journey that we are in. So I want you to pay serious attention. I want you to pay attention and let us go together. Tonight, I want to share with us very briefly before we begin to pray. If you will, open your Bibles to the book of Jeremiah chapter 18. Jeremiah chapter 18, page 5 or 6. And to you who joins us all across the world, I want you to know that the power of God is just about being unleashed. I want you to be ready and get your faith up, get your spirit lit up by the word of God before we begin to pray. So that by the time you are praying, you are praying with the mind of the spirit. You are praying correctly in the will of the Father. And you are praying prayers that cannot be denied. So I want to open the scriptures and release the light of God to you from the, uh, from the text and from the Bible. Let's look at the book of Jeremiah chapter 18. I read from verse 1 down to 6. The word of the Lord came to me, Jeremiah, from uh, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Arise, go down to the potter's house. And there I will cause you to hear my word. Now we begin to take note from this that God called Jeremiah and God told him to go to the potter's house. And until he gets to the potter's house, he was not going to hear his instruction. So in the potter's house, there are instructions for the writings. Now we are coming to the potter's house. And the potter is the maker, is the mold, is the originator, is the creator himself. We are coming from our various places, from wherever our destinies have been, whatever we have been busy with, wherever we are coming from, from all tribes and tongues, we are coming to the potter's house, where it all began the very first time. We are coming to the master who is the the Bible says God is the beginner and the finisher of our faith. Now God asked Jeremiah to go right down to the house of the potter and he was going to get that instruction when he gets there. In verse 3, then I went down to the potter's house and there he was making something out of the wheel. God is making something. Whether you know it or you do not know it, God is making something beautiful out of your lives Amen. for the fact that you are waiting on Him. The Bible says they that do wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Amen. God is making something. Remember, I told you He's the potter. He's busy with you. You may not, it may not look like uh, what your experience is right now may not exactly portray that God is at work. But I want to say to you clearly that God is truly at work in your lives. Behind the scene, the maker of the heavens and the earth is at work. And the vessel that he made of clay was man by the hands of the potter. So he made it again into another vessel as it seemed good to the, potters, uh, to the potter to make. In verse 5, then the word of the Lord came to me saying, O house of Israel, can I not do with you as this potter, saying, says the Lord, look, as the clay is in the hands of the potter, so are you in my hands, O house of Israel. Oh, glory to God. Amen. Now, every time God talks in the parable, every time God talks and speaks with example 
host, practical like this, is trying to communicate something very deep. Mm -hmm. He's communicating something very deep. And life, like I told us yesterday, is purely spiritual. Purely spiritual. And God wants to extend the knowledge of the fact that I am sovereign. I am sovereign. Nobody stops me. When I intend to do anything, I have the capacity and the ability to do whatever I intend to do. In Psalm 135, Psalm 135, verse 6 and 7, that's, uh, Psalm 135, verse 6 and 7, the Bible says, the Lord does all things that pleases Him. He does all things that pleases Him. He is the God who decided by Himself from the heavens to the earth to the seas and to the deep places of the earth. God does all things that pleases Him. It is in His will to decide to make vapor come out of the ends of the earth. Vapor going back to heaven from all sides of the globe. He decides also to make sure He created lightning for the rain. He decided also to bring the winds from his treasures into all part of the earth. He does all that pleases him. He is God, Jehovah El Shaddai. Jehovah, the man of war. He is God, the sovereign Lord, the God that is all by himself. No one can be God. So he decided, he made us in his image and in his likeness. And his intention, originally, could have been mad by the adversary. It could have been mad by some of our decisions and choices. Although God is sovereign and is able to do all that pleases him, he equally gave us choice. He wanted us to make choices, moral choices, decisions by ourselves. And some of these decisions we have made in life got our destinies mad. Some of us, right now, where we are, we are as it were in the holes of life. Mm -hmm. And some demons seem to have legal hold upon our lives. But the reality is, God is still so good. Mm -hmm. He is still able to bring beauty out of the conditions that we have found ourselves. Mm -hmm. He is sovereign. Mm -hmm. He is sovereign. There is nobody that can challenge his ability to do whatever he wants to do. Mm -hmm. And so tonight, God is calling us to go back to the Potter's house. Amen. We are going back to the Potter's house. And by the time we begin to pray tonight, you understand why I said we must go back to the Potter's house. That is where we were made originally. And that's the only place we can be remade. That's the only place we can be restored back to life. In the Potter's house, that is the place where our destinies can be renewed. And we are going back to the potter. Amen. Tonight the potter is going to be busy with your case again. Amen. Once again, there's going to be beauty coming out of your asses. Amen. So God took Jeremiah and sent him to the potter's house. And he said, in the potter's house, you will hear a voice. I have words waiting for you at the potter's house. Amen. Right at this potter's house where we are tonight, God has a word for your life. Amen. He has a word for your destiny. Amen. I want you to say with me, Lord, speak. I, your servant, are here. Lord, speak. Wherever you are, remember the world joining us tonight, I want you to say, Lord, speak. I, your servant, I am hearing you. Lord, speak. When we get to the potter's house, there will be a voice of deliverance. There will be a voice of healing. There will be a voice of sanctification. There will be a voice of release. There will be a voice of total freedom. And that voice is coming out of the water's house today in the name of Jesus Christ. So tonight I want to show you what will it mean for God to bring us to the water's house. We have learned from that Psalm 135 verse 6 that God is suffering. We have seen that he is the same God who brought even the wind out of his treasures. So the east wind comes and the west wind comes out of God's own treasure. He intends to bring them out of the treasure houses in heaven. 
He is the God that commanded the vapor to go out from the ends of the earth back to heaven. He is the God that decided to create the lightning to accompany the rain. He is God. Nobody told him, nobody counseled him to do that. He did it all by himself. He is all capable, he is all powerful, he is all knowing, he is all willing to do that which pleases him. And nobody can restrict him. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Now, it is time for us in the day one of this journey to begin to acknowledge God, the Almighty God, as our sovereign God. The God who has all power to do whatever he pleases. In your personal life, one of the prayers we are praying tonight is to say publicly, is to admit and acknowledge, Father, I have come to you tonight to dedicate and to surrender. To let you know that I recognize you as the sovereign Lord. You are Lord, you are master over my life. I have held on to my life within my will, but now I'm laying everything down before you. You are sovereign, you are able, you are capable to make me into another vessel again. Amen. No matter what the enemy has done concerning your life, he can remake you, Amen. he can remold you. Now, one other thing we are going to do is to totally submit to him tonight and surrender by simply humbling ourselves before the Lord. Humbling ourselves. Fasting is a waste of time if it does not humble us. If it does not humble you before God. If it does not get you to submit and surrender. And say, not my will, but your will be done. That is what a fast should do. And that's exactly when you find freedom and deliverance. That I no longer hold my life by myself. I release it to you, Jehovah. And that's when God can come in. As long as you are in charge of your life, God cannot do much. Praise the Lord. As I said, praise the Lord. So I want you to know tonight, we are coming to submit at the potter's house. We are coming to surrender at the potter's house. We are coming to humble ourselves at the potter's house and say, say to him, Lord, you are in charge. Lord. That's what we are coming to do. Hallelujah. Amen. There can be no meaningful and fruitful prayer or fasting without sincere surrender and consecration to God. Every claim of a fast, every claim of praying, without this dedication, consecration, and surrender to God is fake. It will make no meaning to God. It will not attract God's attention. So the very first point tonight in our journey with God is to come with an attitude of surrender and to ask Him, you are my daughter. You made me for your own purpose. I might have been mad by circumstances and situations. Right as I am now, it doesn't look like this is exactly what you made. But I'm coming to surrender. I am coming back to the brother's house. You can remake me. You can actually resize me and put me to another shape. You can put me to another use, to your glory. And that is the beginning of a genuine and a fruitful prayer. Hallelujah. Yeah. That we submit and we consecrate ourselves fully to the will of God. So we are going to be reshaped. We are going to be refashioned into His glory. We are going to be reshaped and refashioned to His own glory. And that's exactly the beginning of our journey. 21 days of glory begins with us submitting. Coming right down to the very bottom of the bottom and say to God, we are here. Remake us, reshape us, take us and use us to your glory. We are still here for you. Hallelujah. Amen. That's why we say to God, I am decreasing and I want you to increase in us. Increase in us. When God increases in you, you won't have to cast any demon out. You won't have to say to Satan, leave me alone. You won't have to do that. 
His presence alone will cast out all the demons manifesting against you. Because in the presence of God, there is the fullness of joy. That is right and there are pleasures forevermore. Amen. Now you're going to begin to declare along with me a faith believing in the name of Jesus. Now tonight, tonight, I renounce every ego in me. I renounce every pride in me. Whatever makes me not make me, whatever makes me think I am for myself. Whatever makes me believe my life is my own. Whatever makes me believe that I'm in charge is an ego. I didn't know when I actually came to this planet, I only discovered that I am here. And I'm only learning to find out what is my purpose. But there is one who knew before you were found in your mother's womb. There is one who had a clear purpose in his mind concerning you. And that is the potter. And that is the potter we are coming to tonight. And so we are coming to him to declare, Lord, I relinquish my ego. I am submitting my pride. I release my arrogance. My stubbornness of God and my resistance. I release myself from them. These things that I do, objective obedience, you know, selective obedience, I choose what to obey and what not to obey. I tell God I'm okay with this, but this one I'm not down with that. We're going to come to surrender. I have no will when it comes to coming to the Potter's house. It must be His will and His will alone. Amen. Can God not do with us what He did with the Potter, uh, with, the, with, the, with, the, with the pot that broke? Can God not do with us what the Potter did to the clay? He could decide to mash it together again and start afresh. Amen. God can do the same with our lives. Amen. No matter how tattered and how terrible we have been, no matter how much we have strayed away from His presence, God is able to restart our lives again. Amen. And that exactly is what we want tonight. Amen. We don't want to go to those who will patch our lives. We do not want to go to those who will complain about our lives. We do not want to come before the doctors that have no solution to our ailment. We want to go to the real potter, the potter himself, who can break us and remove us and give us a new shape, a new identity, a new meaning to life, and a new future. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. That is the potter we are coming to tonight. I hope your spirit is opening up because we are just about to pray. Hallelujah. Amen. So when we renounce the ego, we renounce the pride, the arrogance, the stubbornness, you know, some of us will not even know we are stubborn until we line ourselves up to submit and God begins to show you yourself. You remember that same scripture, Jeremiah chapter 18, God said, Jeremiah, go to the potter's house. I have a word for you when you get there. Now, there are words that you will never get from God until you submit to Him. Mm. Until you come on the altar of surrender and say, Lord, just expose me to me. Just open my eyes to understand exactly my life. And God will begin to show you to you. And nobody would have been able to tell you exactly who you are than God. Because from the beginning, He had a motive. He had an intention before creating us. And whatever is out of balance in our lives right now, God is aware. Mm -hmm. Whatever is out of position from His plan for our lives right now, God knows. So in order to get you fixed, in order to have your life mended, in order to truly know the genesis of the problem, we've got to go to him and surrender. Yes. Say, now I become the king, yes. and I allow you to become the potter. Mm -hmm. I submit to your sovereignty. Mm -hmm. I want you to do again. Reshape me. Renew me. Turn things around for me. Amen. I'm back to the potter's house. And that's our focus tonight. Mm -hmm. Submission dedication, total surrender. That's our prayer point tonight. I want you to say these prayers as quickly as you can. By the grace of God, or perhaps you can get it recorded so that you can make these prayers by yourself. Tonight, 
I want you to go to God sincerely, completely, totally dedicated and surrender. You are not willing to have any ounce of your life in your hands. You want everything to be in God's hands. You want them to return you back to the factory and regenerate you afresh. Amen. Praise you the Lord. Amen. And the prayer begins with that issue of ego. I renounce my ego. I renounce my pride, my arrogance, my stubbornness, my resistance. Some of us will resist God. My resistance to the truth. My rebellion, I submit, I renounce them. My selective obedience, whereby I choose what to believe in God's word. My knowledge and my skill that has been a big hindrance to me following God. I renounce them. My mindset, and I align myself to your will, O God. I align myself to your will. I align myself to your ways. I accept your purpose and your plans for my life. I receive your thoughts for me. And I believe them being good and perfect. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And that will be the very first on the line of prayer I need you to make sincerely with God tonight. I want you to pray this prayer. I dedicate myself to seek you. To wait on you until my destiny is restored. I make a decision to seek you, to dedicate myself to you until my destiny is restored for you. Hallelujah. Thirdly, I surrender completely to you, O God. Have your way in my life from this day forward. Fourthly, you're going to say, I humble myself in total submission to your will for my life. And the fifth, not my will, but your will be done in my life of today, O God. Not your will, not my will, but your will be done in my life of today in the name of Jesus. The next, from this moment onwards, I yield myself to you, O Lord. From this moment onwards, I yield myself to you. And the next, my body is fully yours from today. My soul is yours from today. My spirit is totally submitted to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. And lastly, because of the time, I renounce all premeditated sin and all my secret faults. I repent of them all in the name of Jesus. I renounce all my premeditated sin and all my secret faults. I repent of them all in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. That's it, my friends. I want to bless you today for joining us. I want you to take these prayers on. And I want you to be very serious about this. God is about to speak to you about your life. God is about to reveal you to you. God is about to give you an answer to the complications that you have in your life. Therefore, tonight, I want you to make it a date with your Father. As you pray those prayers, of submission, dedication, and absolute surrender to the Lord. He is sovereign. He is able to make something new about your life again. Hallelujah. Glory to God.